imagine Origins being right next to like Star Trek on Paramount. You know what I mean? You could potentially be a fan of both. But it, uh, <laughs> <laughs> sum it up for Jamaicans. You want, you want a quick version? <laughs> Three Finger Jack versus Annie Palmer. The slightly more extended version is that it is a story full of our historical and mythological characters who have all come together in a brand new adventure. So there's time travel, there's magic, there's monsters, all kinds of stuff, but it's all based on Jamaican culture and history in the first place. He asked me one day, like, what, what would I like to see? Like, if I could see a story um, out of Jamaica. And I said, well, I'd love to see our, those very people, our, our, our heroes, our mythological figures, but translated into a modern way so that the younger generation finds a way to connect with it because I just had so much of it growing up and I felt like it was so absent now that I was like, oh, Kurt, if we could do this, if we could find a way to... And he took that and he ran and came back and he was like, here you go. <laughs> so it's for her then. Kind of, yeah. I mean, when I asked her the question, it was purely from a Jamaican standpoint, just to say, you know, just you as a Jamaican, we know the the limited amount of content that there is on TV. And I was basically just asking her, what would you as a Jamaican like to see? And that was her response. And origins kind of got spawned from that. Because we genuinely feel and, and truly believe that the culture is fading. And it's interesting having a conversation with anybody under say 30. And you, you'll say to them, you know, do you know, you know Nanny? Of course I know Nanny. Nanny's on the $500 bill. So you go, all right, cool. You know Kojo? Blank stairs. Which, which to me is amazing, you know? Three Finger Jack, I think I've heard something. River Mama, blank stairs, mm. you know? So essentially it was our way of bringing these characters back into the forefront of our storytelling for another generation who the feedback we've been getting has been yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Um, both people from the diaspora, our age, not dating us, but our <laughs> age, and younger, mm -hmm. they've all had really great responses to it so far. And that's, that's kind of the point. I want people mm -hmm. to see them, learn about them, and you know, be so interested that they now look it up and, and realize yeah. where their history is coming from. How, <laughs> how was it for you guys making Origins, keeping in mind that stereotype and trying to surpass that and make it for an international stage? Um, if I'm being honest, I didn't. Yeah. I, I don't think about that. Uh, whether it's in Origins or any of my own work, um, and just anything else in general, my bar is my own. And I don't do work for a Jamaican audience as much as I do it for a worldwide audience. Um, a friend of mine many years ago said to me, you know, do you want to impress everybody in Jamaica or do you want to impress, you know, do you want to impress all the Jamaicans in New York was the example he used, or do you want to impress all of New York? And that's, that's pretty much how I shoot. I shoot to be better than my last project. I'm not interested in being better than this person's or that person's. I have my own standards for my own work. Okay. Is that not difficult to, to have such a high standard for yourself though with all the Jamaican limitations? Um, in, in a lot of ways I, I don't think it is. I think maybe it takes a little longer mm -hmm. to, to do certain things because you, you have to uh, save money, you have to find ways around that lack of funding to create something of a quality that you'd be willing to show. And I think that's, that's really the, that, the sticking point where you just, it just takes a little longer to get there, but you'd rather take a little longer to get there and produce work worth seeing than, than try to rush something out to the gate because you're like, well, I only had the dollar. When you're like, oh, but if I waited two months, I'd have a hundred dollars and what could we do with that? The reality, though, is that when we talk about the limitations, again, it's not necessarily something that I think about. The limitations are only based on what, what sort of story are you trying to tell. Mm -hmm. um, and the limitations in Jamaica, for me personally, it comes down to money most of the time. It really just is financing. Yeah. We've done projects on our own, out of our own pocket. Um, to a large extent, how Origins came about was we, did, um, we applied to Jafta Propeller, and we were one of five winners in the flagship um, version of Propeller. So Origins was originally a 12-minute 12, 12 film. Mm -hmm. um, we did this 12-minute film. 
the Ministry of Culture uh, saw it and chose it as a film that they wanted to put some money towards, which mm -hmm. at the time, as to the best of my knowledge, was unheard of. Mm -hmm. And essentially, they offered us the money just saying, this is for whatever you want to do with it. Mm -hmm. And we took that. And then the Branson Center came along and suggested that we apply for a grant. Yeah. Um, um, but okay. in all honesty, like the, the transition to being able to apply for the grant, we have to thank Ministry of Culture for being the position to be able to even apply for the grant. Mm -hmm. Because how the grant worked is you have to have a certain percentage of the money yourself, mm -hmm. and then they will give you a percentage if you get through. This, the, the special effects and the visual effects aspects of it, um, they sort of fell into the same bracket as, as literally everything else in terms of the production because we were just really lucky that the crew that we yeah. have to work alongside believed in yeah. the project 110%. They gave of themselves in such a, such a big way because even with a grant, like they, they were not paid what they were worth, but mm -hmm. they saw value in what we were doing. And they were like, we're, we're with you for the for the journey. It is locally made, as we've said, mm -hmm. but it is fully locally casted. All the people who are most of the people mm -hmm. are from Jamaica, born yeah. and raised. What was that process finding people to embody? Nani and Kwashi and Jack and all these people. Well, um, I th what was lucky, I think my my background as an actor helped, um, and then a lot of the people Kurt had also worked with in different capacities over the years in, in the industry. Um, and they, a good amount of them had already come on board with us for the short film mm -hmm. when we did it. And so when it came time to do the pitch pilot, well, we're like, well, you get first option to take the role again. And if you don't want it, you know, we'll find someone, but you get first option to take the role again because you're part of why we're even here now. Mm -hmm. um, and pretty much everybody yeah. came back on board. Um, and then we own, there's only one person we had to cast outside of Jamaica, um, and that was our Annie. Um, mm -hmm. Just because it's, there just aren't that many actresses of the right complexion who can do the accent. It's, there were just so many elements needed for an Annie that we just had to. But it was a Jamaican who gave us the link to our, so still connections. <laughs> big ups to Colin, Colleen Litchfield who flew down from New York. Yes came and lived with us yeah. um, for the entire yeah. time that we were shooting. And basically, even on the days where she wasn't shooting, yeah, she also <laughs> got so invested in mm -hmm. the idea that she just wanted to be on set and she'd always be in the background, you know, just watching the process because she knew nothing about these characters. And by the time she did and she met yeah. the other actors, mm -hmm. everybody just hit it off and got along so well that, you know. The cast, mm -hmm. star-studded, yeah. Johnny Daly, Farland, Yoli Forbes, Chantal Jackson, some of whom aren't even with us anymore. Mm -hmm. What was it like working on one of the last things we would have ever seen them in? A gift. Yeah. Um, I was incredibly proud of the work that Chris did with Taku. Like, he, he, for he forever will be my Taku, is a reality. Yeah. Like no matter what happens with this journey after that, he will be forever my Taku. Like he, he brought magic to that character for me. And I mean, Leonie is Leonie. <laughs> um, I, I grew up with her and to be able to be in a space where I was a part of creating work that she was in is a gift I will cherish till the day I die. <laughs> uh, Miss Lee was, um one of my absolute, if not my absolute favorite person to work with. And everyone in Jamaica rightfully has her on this, you know, massive level. And I think she was the only person who did not hold herself at that level. She was one of the most humble mm -hmm. people I've ever worked with. She was one of the most open and giving actors I've ever worked with. Um, and at the same time, she was just so grounded and just so cool, yeah. just as a human being. I mean, one day we were on set for something else, a different project, and the crew was making a little bit too much noise while she was trying to have a conversation with me. And before I could get frustrated, she turns around, she goes, Oi, wanna not hear my talk to my director? Wanna keep on him out? <laughs> turns back to me. So as you were saying, and I just, I just, I love you. I love you so much. And she was like, I love you too. Let's just... <laughs> yeah. 
she was she was amazing mm -hmm. and then um chris chris mcfarlane man chris was just one of my favorite people man and he we worked on something last year um for hbo and we were on set and I found out afterwards that one of the overseas actors had asked Chris, you know, so like, is this, you know, like, like what you're looking forward to the most? And Chris said, no, it's Origins. And I only found this out after because that actor came to me later on to ask me, so tell me about this, this Origins <laughs> thing. And I'm wondering, why on earth is this person, <laughs> you know, like coming to me about, like, who told you about that? And he explained to me what Chris said. And I, I couldn't have been more just flattered and honored mm. by that you know because like mm. I said we really really believe in it mm. you know so my favorite part about origins is after people have watched it we've gotten so many questions of what did we shoot it with and the answer always surprises people yeah. because we live in the world where you know like if it's not a red if it's not an array it's not saying yeah. anything we shot origins on two Sony a7s2s and a bunch of aperture lights yeah. We, we mm. did have help here and there where yeah. like phase three had, mm -hmm. you know, been very mm -hmm. helpful on, on some of the bigger scenes yeah. where they had kind of donated mm -hmm. um, lights for the day, like just, just yeah. these two big 4Ks and that we had Far Eye Films. Field. And Far Eye Films like... is amazing. They were just so supportive yeah. of everything that we needed. But the reality is two A7S2s and a bunch of aperture lights and just the knowledge of what it is we wanted. Mm -hmm. I had a conversation with our director of photography, Gareth Daly, and um, we kind of just built the look in the camera, knowing what we were going for at the end of the day. And it came out looking fantastic. Between that and Darren Scott um, being the colorist, mm -hmm. it's, it, it cannot look any better unless you shoot it with a different mm -hmm. camera, you go upgrading after this. Yeah. Um, it really came out looking fantastic. So yeah, we are yeah. very proud of it and we're very pr proud yeah. of the performances that we got from our cast. Mm -hmm. So yeah, overall. And our whole team, like we, we had done a crew showing and just to be able to share that moment with all of them and let them know this, this is what you poured your blood, sweat and tears into and they were happy that they poured their blood, sweat and tears because I was more nervous at the crew showing mm -hmm. <laughs> than that shot list because I was like, if they don't like it and they just poured their blood, sweat and tears into it, we're in trouble. We're never getting any favors again, <laughs> ever, ever, ever. And it was, <laughs> yeah, well, that night was a beautiful night, just coming together with everybody. And what we've done, I mean, fortunately for us, I mean, it's been done, so we have what we need. Unfortunately, we're not necessarily geared up to do, say, a film festival run necessarily because just to be perfectly clear origins is a pitch pilot and the whole idea of it is to be able to take it into the rooms with the netflixes the hbo's the hulu's the paramount's the whoever um to be able to pitch this idea to them on a level of the the so many projects have been coming to Jamaica, even just beginning last year especially. We worked about 10 out of 12 months last year. Mm -hmm. um, and this, all of these projects and all of these streaming services are coming to Jamaica. They're seeing what we have to offer. They're realizing how strong our crews are. They're realizing how hard we work, how capable we are. What they're not aware of is the stories that we have to tell out here. So what we really want to do is we want to be on the equivalent of a Paramount set or a Hulu set or a Netflix set and this is our story. This is our people. Mm -hmm. If we have to fly in a couple heads of departments to kind of show us how certain things are done, that sort of thing, that's fine. We're not Hollywood yet, but we're doing our best to tell our stories at a quality that when you present them to the world, they can stand right alongside anything else that you mm -hmm. will see on these people's platforms. And for them, the benefit is it will be so completely different from everything else on their platforms. Imagine Origins being right next to like Star Trek on Paramount. You know what I mean? You could potentially be a fan of both. I'm imagining it. But it, uh, <laughs> 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 you could be a fan of both, but the reality is, is it would be two completely different shows with just mm -hmm. such an incredibly diverse cast, a brand new sort of story for like an overseas audience mm -hmm. that at the same time, when we talk about the Jamaican diaspora, the African diaspora, like all of that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's something that we believe passionately, passionately in it because it's not just something we did, it's something we want to see. Mm -hmm. I'd, I'd, like every time we were on set, like we'd shoot a scene and I'd be like, I want to watch this show. When can I watch the show? <laughs> genuinely, <laughs> and genuinely. Like, I meant it. Like, yeah, we. I'm so excited to watch this show that we haven't. 
Yeah. Done yet. Yeah. <laughs> what should people look out for and why will they enjoy it? For me, Origins is a reflection of us, of how incredibly rich Jamaicans are as a culture, as a people. Our stories are in a class of their own and I think so worth seeing and I think anybody would watch Origins and be able to take something regardless of where you're from. I think there, there's the hero, there's magic, there's the, you know, the ingenue, there's the, the warrior, there's so many people that you as an audience member can see yourself in regardless of your background and I think it's something to be proud of as a Jamaican but just something to look forward to as an audience member. I see it as a, as a really fun learning experience. I'm not trying to make it sound like school, I was never good at that, but, <laughs> but the reality is, is that these are our stories, as I said, and these are our characters. Yes, I've taken them and I've put them into like a brand new adventure with each other, but at the same time, their own stories, separate and apart from the story yeah. we're telling, are so awesome mm -hmm. and worth reading about, worth learning about, worth watching. This is a series with spin-off potential and prequel potential and all kinds of things mm -hmm. because just because Three Finger Jack may have gone about his business doesn't mean we can't do the next season about Nanny. You know, that sort of thing. So all we're trying to do is raise people's awareness in a way that they will thoroughly enjoy the story that they've just watched, but then at the same time go, no, so hold on, that Kodja did really exist, and who mm. was Kwashi, and let me go mm. look up Taku, and what is, mm. you know what I mean? So it, it, it in, in a lot of ways, it can even bring more tourism to the island when it reaches that sort of a bigger level where people start to get interested in the actual history of Jamaica, outside of just beaches and weed, you know? Mm. We are so much more than that, and we just want the chance to show the world that 